Welcome back. You got Will and Iron Man here from the Block Run, MetaZone, Rovi, and Enscribe. And today we're going to be talking about ETFs on Bitcoin. Wow. Exciting times, dude. It is. <laughs> so we've so been excited. We've been talking about, I guess, this <coughs> impending uh, like onboarding onto Bitcoin for years, right? We, yeah. we figured it was going to be like companies onboarding and then it's going to be countries. You know, it's like it had to be, right? Because yeah. if... If this trajectory, like on Bitcoin, on its way to a million dollar valuation, has been predicted for a while now, right, right. If this is even to manifest, you have to look at the capital requirements for that to happen. You start to realize, like, dude, holy shit, this is like unforeseen capital like allocation we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, right. It, these these so, financial occurrences don't happen too frequently. So usually there's like some major macro forces afoot to right. kind of like you know bring these transitions. So BlackRock ETF coming into Bitcoin, this this is on the scale of like the biggest companies getting into Bitcoin, right? You would agree? Yeah, like the biggest asset managers on earth. Right. Like this is so there the are no are bigger already... companies other than BlackRock, <laughs> right? Like in like in an institutional sense. Institutional finance? Yeah. I don't think so. Like this is the one. This is the holy mecca of like, yeah, asset managers, right? So the, you know and. So this would be like, this is like the Coinbase or the Binance or the institutional finance world. It's like a coin gets listed on Coinbase. Yeah. It's legitimized. It's, it's, yeah. it's got here. Right. It's bound for like a uh, hundred X or whatever. Right. Or right, Binance right. listings. So this is the same thing. Yeah. That's why people are labeling this as Bitcoin's IPO moment. Right, right, right. right. Which is fucking crazy. Like, yeah. For the last, what, 15 <clears throat> years or so, we've been like, like a In private mode. <laughs> yeah. We've been a private company, right? <laughs> The Bitcoin yeah. holders. So now this is like open to the public in the eyes and the scope of, I guess, like U.S. Regula regula regulators, right? Right, right, right. And institutional money. So, yeah. So it's a big but, deal. So this is a big step for like for the phase of like companies and institutions. Mm -hmm. But then there's another phase, which is the countries that come after this. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, the, the motivations for countries to start stockpiling. I mean, I think the it's already there. Uh, once you once Bitcoin traverses into like the multi trillion dollar yeah like asset range yeah uh, it's recognized I, as like an asset to hold at that point. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to become pretty well understood. It's like this has to be part of our treasury like balance sheet one way or another. Yeah. How much it's dependent on each country's I guess manager, <laughs> treasury maintainer. Dude, that's crazy. The the Winklevi and MicroStrategy yeah. they're like on the level of countries at this point. Oh, they're going to be very very fucking <laughs> massively wealthy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have the Winklevi Zuckerberg rematch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. fucking top 10 wealthiest people on the planet, you know? Right. It's crazy. All right, so we're looking at BlackRock filed its third amendment to its spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming they have to go through these amendments because the SEC and BlackRock dialogue, it's like, okay, you need to update this, you need to change that, you need to tell everybody that there's a risk with Bitcoin becoming a security mm. when there's really zero risk. But <laughs> okay. it yeah. needs to be added into the document as a risk uh, yeah, yeah. asset or profile. Correct. Um, so yeah, so it's finally happening and BlackRock isn't the only one. And we have, um, in addition to that, Bitcoin <laughs> ETF applicant Bitwise releases new Bitcoin ETF commercial. Let's check this out. All right, let me go back. Let me increase let me the audio some, here. There you go. And let's blow it up. It's only 15 seconds. Yeah. Here we go. You know what's interesting these days? Bitcoin. <laughs> Look for Bitwise, my friends. Boom. Wow. I'm all in, dude. <laughs> wow. I'm all in. Where do I sign my 401k? Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> I need to add this immediately next to my uh, Coca-Cola portfolio. <laughs> my, and Apple and yeah, Amazon. Yeah, all these fucking legacy stocks and equities and assets that I've been accruing over my many years here on this uh, financial <laughs> earth <laughs> because, you know, I'm a graybeard. Right. Now I have another fellow graybeard telling me is you need to be looking into Bitcoin. Not only he's the most interesting man in the world. Yeah. He's the most attractive of the graybeards, <laughs> right? Interesting, attractive. He's, he's the guy. Right. If you don't know who this is, this is the Dos Equis lad, right? Right. 
It's definitely him, right? It's definitely him. It's not like a lookalike. <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah, literally the most interesting man in the world is telling a whole new like demographic of of investor. Yeah. You know, Bitcoin needs to be on your bucket list. And it's regulated. It's comfortable. It's, yeah. <laughs> exactly what you like. You don't have to be worried about these these fucking degenerate internet trolls. Right. Right. This is comfortable. It's bitwise and BlackRock and mm -hmm. Fidelity. And, yeah. You know, these are ins financial institutions, right? Yeah. That have been around for decades. Yeah. So. 800-pound uh, gorilla, <laughs> as they like, say. Yeah. So, in other words, the marketing is already beginning. Right. This is clearly something is brewing afoot. Like, the, they're getting ready for, like, one hell of a... Yeah, not only that. So, once these things get approved, we're going to see tons of these, like, versions all over. Like, regular-ass TV, like, <laughs> Boomer TV. Yeah. Right? We're going to see it on Twitter, like, just yeah. like we, we saw here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be everywhere, right? Yeah. And then, then it's like, we're going to get calls from our, like, parents and grandparents, like... Yeah. You always talk about Bitcoin. Well, I know. Should I buy the ETF now? Exactly. You're going to ask for, like, assistance. It's like, how do I, you know do this yeah. like i don't fucking know dude <laughs> <laughs> just go to coinbase <laughs> go fucking buy some actual bitcoin man it's yeah. like but they don't want to do that they're scared of that well and it's okay well that generation has yeah. a lot of their money in their 401k so that's Correct. that's where the liquidity is yeah and there's tax implications and such that's right, right? It's, yeah. it, that's why they call it institutional finance right it's very it's a fucking dinosaur dude yeah <laughs> you can't fuck with it you know it is what it is it's a big dinosaur though we're talking about multiple <laughs> trillions of dollars yeah, how big is that dinosaur? There's some predictions out there, right? Or like assessments of right here. Grayscale CEO. Okay, so Grayscale CEO says spot Bitcoin ETF approval would unlock about $30 trillion worth of advised wealth for Bitcoin. Yeah, dude. So that's a lot. That's a, that's a T, not a B. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't talk about T's. Actually, that's we do personally because we put like trillion in most of our video titles. <laughs> <laughs> straight clickbait mode yeah. but this one's for real yeah. this is an actual like observable trillion dollars you know how people are saying like metaverse is multi-trillion yeah that's not really like observable you don't know where that's coming from <laughs> right you know where this money's coming from dude it's it's present yeah it it's exists. in everyone's like retirement f accounts that's right yeah it's crazy yeah yeah this is i don't know man this is uh sort of something that we've been Talking about for a while, but now that it's actually happening, it's and, a little weird. And it's either days or weeks away. Like, it's looming on the horizon. So, yeah, I think it's definitely time <laughs> as all of us collectively kind of, like, recenter our, our I guess, energies. Right. <laughs> on Big Daddy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the king of all kings, right? Yeah. So, what's your prediction? What's, what's the price going to do upon announcement? I'm thinking we're... We're definitely like an unprecedented territory. Like this is what, what's the inverse of a black swan, a white swan? Uh, yeah, I guess so. A this, white hole. What the, I would. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. I <It's> just <laughs> whatever, dude. Whatever you want to call it. This is. But they called it a golden swan. There you go. Gold swan event. Okay. <laughs> right. It's the black swans typically like some some sort of. I don't know, force, macro force, unfor yeah. typically unforeseeable, right? Kind of like yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, where it's yeah. just going to plummet the whole market sentiment, right? Yeah, and this is the exact opposite of that. Yeah, I feel like this is something that we haven't experienced for sure. And like all of crypto. So are you saying like right now, it was like 2019 when you and I were talking about China and they oh were spraying God. down the cities. Yeah. We we're seeing the exact opposite. It's more like spraying down with like... <laughs> Money with gold, yeah. With Literally, gold. gold is raining in the streets, and they're, they're called bitcoins. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's don't you feel it? You don't feel that? Uh, yeah. It's just I don't know. I guess it's hard to believe. Yeah, I, I, yeah, totally. But but what I'm saying though is, so this is the big question on our minds, right? It's like, <laughs> once this news hits of like you know, what's the ticker? I bit. I bit to the ETF. Yeah. Once this thing is like officially live. Liquidity capital starting to pour into this thing. Yeah. How's the market going to react? Like to me, this is like floodgates are open. Institutional money is here. The herd is finally here. It's not like the herd is coming. The herd yeah. is here. Bitcoin is a recognized. So this is like unprecedented green candle stairway to heaven type activity, in my hmm. opinion. V shaped recovery action. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> let me let me challenge that thought here okay. for a second. 
What if the mechanics of, of these transactions, buying an ETF, mm. isn't buying Bitcoin off the market? What if it's like over the counter, like sales occurring? Right. And well, so a lot, a lot of the action won't be seen directly on the price. Well, but as you know, these markets, they just, all of this is, all this is really tracking these lines here that we're looking at, these green and red candles. Yeah, market sentiment. It's just sentiment. Yeah. yeah. Belief and disbelief. That's all these lines represent. Yeah. And as far as like what is a good driver of positive sentiment, positive belief is, is yeah, people, regardless of the mechanism. That's true because, yeah, regular people are going to be buying Bitcoin and that's yeah. going to push the price up. And like you're saying now, like the conversation kind of like hits the mainstream, right? That's true. And then it's going to trickle throughout, yeah, you know, well, family Yeah, all of a sudden like uh, BlackRock has a balance of Bitcoin just going up because they have yeah. to disclose this information. It's like, wait a minute, regular people are seeing that. It's like, well, I'm just going to buy Bitcoin. And then <laughs> yeah. this number starts going up. Uh, uh, yeah, that's my assessment, my yeah. prediction. I think we're going to see like an unprecedented rush. And this is going to affect the, like the, uh, the ordinals market. I would say altcoins, but this whole period of, of capital influx we've experienced over the last year has been largely resulting from ordinals and mm -hmm. yeah. the Bitcoin ecosystem itself that is emerging. But so we've seen tremendous gains there. But I think a lot of that liquidity is going to just refunnel the Bitcoin during this period of like, this is like a Bitcoin renaissance moment, you know? Yeah. I don't know how long this euphoria is going to last, maybe like a month or two, mm -hmm. maybe three before the happening. And then maybe it'll be like a cool down. Yeah. But yeah, I'm thinking my, this is just me. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My prediction, just to have it on the record, is once this thing drops, we're going to balloon <laughs> straight to all-time high, dude. <laughs> and you're saying unlikely. Uh, but, 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 what I'm <laughs> saying is think of the, the strategy of, like, traders. Mm -hmm. They sell the news. And so when, True. when they hear about, like, Bitcoin yeah. ETF, it's like the buy button is hot and ready. Yeah. So or the sell button. I, I thought say. about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like typically it's like buy the rumor. Which you could attribute like all this upward oh, action yeah. for the last year. Yeah. It's like buying the rumor, right? Right. And then sell the news. And so like, okay, the ETF drops, whatever. Yeah. We kind of like lose interest in Bitcoin. Yeah. And then it goes back to like 35K and it hangs it's, out there for like a year and then it explodes. Uh, I just, I can't see that happening just because of, I don't know. That that seems wild to me. It's like, oh, but institutional money finally wants our Bitcoin. It's like time to sell it. Yeah. I don't see the rationale to that, but you're right. Like typically, historically, that is how the markets behave. Yeah. Is they sell news. I mean, it's events. pretty interesting. The the one year, it's just nothing but up. A whole year of up. This is like, to me, this is like institutional, like a, accumulation. Accumulation. And then, and then the it's BlackRock you know, loading its bag before this, uh, yeah, this pump. Yeah, dude. So I don't know. We'll see. Really, ultimately, it doesn't matter. We know Bitcoin's is just fucking. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just a temporary dump yeah. or a temporary like explosion, and then it's just gonna just keep going up indefinitely. Yeah. So I'm predicting a V, like a V shape. Remember, like in COVID, how everything just like V shape recovered once we started, like just repumping yeah this uh, is, liquidity into the market. This is that V shape that you're talking about. Yeah. This is COVID. It's like we're shutting down all countries. Boom. So we're like, right. So go a little bit up, up, up. Like we're like, no, no. Uh, up that V right, right there. Like that's where we are right now. Yeah. And so I'm thinking like, boom, <laughs> something like this. I mean, this is, this is relatively small, but <coughs> if this were to happen, you were talking about way up here, like so, going well, all time high. I think the, you'll hit the all time high of like 60 K. Right. Yeah. And a little bit of resistance, just like we saw here. Oh, I see. And then, and then we're breaking through to, I don't know, 100, 150K ranges. <laughs> Dude, if you're right, I would be shocked if you're right. Well, this is a shocking, <laughs> shocking times, dude. Yeah. And there's a lot of macro support for this to even like occur. Like S&P, mm -hmm. everything's like at all-time highs. You know, the inflation rates are going down, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, CPI index, I guess, is just yes. kind of like hovering around. Yeah, correct. There's really not nothing, and then there's people like Russia declaring victory in Ukraine, so like indicating like a little bit of like a hope, a uh, hope yeah, it's all over, potential like peace in the air. Yeah, <laughs> peace is looming. I don't know. It's like there's some macro. It feels a lot better than it did a year or a year ago. Yeah, right? absolutely. So it could happen. Yeah.
All right, so let's take a look at another chart here. So we're looking at the rainbow, our famous rainbow chart. And this is just a, a random set of bands that allow you to kind of predict where Bitcoin should be yeah. in a given cycle. And we're down here at 40 grand. And what you're saying is we could reach, let me kind of zoom in here. Mm -hmm. We could reach somewhere in the 100 to 150K range. So yellow and orange. Pre-havening. Pre-havening. Uh, yeah, orange would surprise me, but yellow for sure. Like I wouldn't be shocked at all if we hit 125K. Yeah, and so if we, if we go back into the past, we've reached yellow pre happening before. Yeah, and, and nobody was like questioning. Well, you're saying because it didn't break yeah. previous all-time high yeah. pre happening Correct. Typically, throughout all these rhythmic cycles in Bitcoin's history, that that previous breakage of all-time high happens post happening. Yeah, right? but check, check these two gray lines, right? If we go back four years ago, these two gray lines, we were... <laughs> We're we're like severely oversold in this in this like section here. Right. Severely oversold. What does that like remind you of as far as like physics? You know? When things go down, they go back up. Oh, I don't know. It's like there's like a compression, right? It's like a it's like energy yeah, yeah. is building. Yeah. For so sure. That means there's gonna be like whenever this is converted, this potential converted to kinetic forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tend to have like much exponential more, more, more volatility. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. You're right. This is like the l biggest accumulation zone ever on Bitcoin. And then yeah. once it pops off, it goes... Fucking bonker zone. Yeah, it does stuff that it hasn't done before. Yeah. So that's, that's I mean, obviously this is just pure entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is definitely entertaining. Yeah, it's fun to imagine, right? It's a lot more fun than imagining the other side of this. Remember, like, we were thinking, like, how low is this shit going to go, dude? Yeah. We're way off the rainbow bands. Is, yeah. like, is it over? <laughs> Are we going to zero? It's yeah, big. I remember telling you, I was like, dude, we're below the bands. This is the time to accumulate. You're like, no, it's going to go lower. Uh, I don't think so. I yeah. think I was agreeing with you. I was like, yeah, 16K seems about right. I remember? Mean, yeah. 16K. We, we're, it's on record, so I'm going to go back. <laughs> and oh, no, I'm pretty sure because we were out there analyzing the FUD in the space. There were people literally saying, like, Ethereum's going back to 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. Those are some big names. I don't want to drop the name. <laughs> <laughs> but we know some very important people out there. They were legit panicking. Yeah. You got to remember around this time, like, FTX was collapsing. And yeah. And literally, the sky was falling. Yeah. Crypto. Legitimately. Yeah. So. SEC was going ham on everybody. <laughs> that was the pre-ordinal era. This was a very dark time on this channel. It for was. Sure. It was horrible. Yeah. We got a lot of flack from TJ for t being negative. <laughs> Yeah, TJ. It's true. <laughs> Kept us grounded, dude. Hundred dollar like, Ethereum, I sell the house. Yeah. Yeah. Pff, didn't happen. Sorry, dude. I yeah. Know. Still have the house. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate for you, dude. Yeah. But yeah, man. I don't know. It's just this is what my hunch. So yeah. Speaking let's of say, hunches. Let's say it happens. Right. We got this hundred and fifty, hundred and twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. That's like a two trillion dollar mm -hmm. liquidity base mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the Bitcoin ecosystem. It's a fuck ton of capital, dude. That's a lot of money. What do we do with all that money? Huh. DeFi. Or, that's my assumption, right? Yeah. Like, how, what do people typically do when they they have money? They want to make more money. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what's a good instrument to do that? And not it's not just DeFi. It's the whole ecosystem of Bitcoin, right? Together, but. Typically, if you refer to Ethereum, the biggest of ecosystem value is contained in DeFi, right? Yeah, correct. So now let's let's take a look at Ethereum and let's look at the DeFi market cap in comparison to Ethereum. We have a 27% DeFi to ETH ratio. Yeah. So if we were to replicate that onto Bitcoin. At a $2 trillion market cap. At $2 trillion, we're looking at $500 billion yeah. worth of DeFi market cap. You know what this number is on Bitcoin, I man? Right now? Right now. Uh of like two hundred like two hundred million. Yeah, it's like near zero percent. It's basically zero percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kinda like the big point here, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Was like now what do we do with two trillion dollars? It's like, yeah, let's 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 leverage the instruments of the central land finance to generate new yield and yeah. you know, new derivative value products and such, but it's like, oh, it doesn't exist. All right. So that's the upside potential, right? Going from a zero to a $500 billion uh, market. And uh, yeah. 
that's something to keep your eyes on, right? Well, the uh, good news is we're potentially going to be interviewing the CTO of Alex Labs, mm. one of the purveyors of DeFi on Bitcoin. Yeah, more specifically on Stacks, Bitcoin's yeah, second I mean, layer, which, yeah. That's the only Eventually, way to have <laughs> DeFi on Bitcoin. <laughs> right, and yeah, we're going to at some point have Benny back on. Yeah. Founder of Track and Tap Ecosystem. So we want to get a clear, rosier picture of exactly how OrdFi is going to construct. Yeah. Because that's going to be important too. Because all these are going to be all different actors and players kind of contributing to this DeFi on Bitcoin narrative. Because mm -hmm. it's essential. You got to have these financial primitives on Bitcoin in order for it to actually, you know, explode. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the video for, for today. Let us know if you have any questions and uh, if you guys think we should be talking about something else, let us know in the comment section below. Mm -hmm. If there's something more interesting than ETFs on Bitcoin, definitely let us know. Yeah. Um, and that's it for us. Appreciate you guys for watching and we will catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>